Mystery Tsunami Documentary. Wow, 20 years. Hey there, if you're new to the show, welcome. If you've been down from the beginning, all I can say is thanks. Time to push the button. History of Tsunami. My name is Sean Akins, Jason DeMarco. Gil Austin. Hi, I'm Chris Hartley, Dana Swanson. Johnny Ray. Sarah Hardy. My name is Brent Busby, and I'm the sound designer. VP of production. I am an editor. I am the voice of Sarah. I am senior editor at Tsunami. Is that right? Hmm? Oh, how did I get involved in Tsunami? Uh, some friends of mine were working at Cartoon Better. Network way back in 19... 94 and they uh, hmm. called me and asked me Curious if I wanted to help create a franchise in the afternoons like an after school uh, block for the children and we worked for a year to create a new destination like after school because I was that kid that used to get off the school bus and I would run home to see Voltron or what the fuck ever was on and I loved superheroes and I loved all that stuff so uh, I thought I could recreate something like that for kids uh, like me. I started working on Toonami in 1996. I got hired to work at TNT to make promos, and while I was doing that, during the day, in the evening, I would go downstairs to Cartoon Network, and Sean Akins and I would come up with ideas for what we thought Toonami should be called and what it should be. It was kind of totally different then, because we didn't really come to work at regular hours. We would work kind of noon to 10, which when you were 22 was pretty great. So the first airing of Toonami was uh, March 17th, 1997, and we barely made it on air. Um, my job was to sort of liaise between Sean and the rest of the network because he had an office here but he never came so people would just say leading up to like where's all the stuff and I was like oh I think we're gonna be oh, ready to turn it in everything was on tape back then and we turned everything in the about an hour before it aired and everyone was super mad and Sean's theory was what are they gonna do not air it and he turned out to be right I started working for Tsunami in 1998, one year after it started. I think my first project was actually editing the one-year anniversary bumps. Thanks. Transformers hiding style. The Beast Wars is coming up next on I think one of the big drivers for Moltar transitioning to Tom was we wanted to, to redesign the franchise just in general it was it i think it had been on for a couple of years so we just wanted to fresh up and do something different the original the first tom came about because sean had a kid robot sticker in his office that he was kind of obsessed with and he really liked the look of that the first tom was cute and then we eventually wanted to sort of get away from that so he had like kind of the pot belly and he didn't walk very well we decided to give him backwards knees like elbows which was a nightmare for animators but we thought looked cool so the look of, of tom was very much driven by the needs of CG and also Sean's personal aesthetics and the fact that the absolution was the size of two football fields. He loved the idea of this giant, huge ship with this little guy inside and you just would wonder, like, what does he do? And all, what about all the rooms? And he was right. People constantly asked us those questions. Sort of the iterations beyond that were always just trying to keep the same basic idea of Tom going, but with some, a new and updated look. In terms of personality, it was really just sort of written from our perspective, I guess is the easiest way to say it. It was more showing our happiness about being able to do this and our, our love for anime and for video games and for music and for skateboarding and all the stuff that we did. So it was kind of everybody who wrote was writing from, a, from their heart, basically. So that's why it sort of, to us, always came across. We were never trying to talk to kids, down to kids. We were more just having a conversation. Life can be pretty tough sometimes. But one thing that can make it better is a friend. We wanted him to sort of be like the wiseacre older brother was kind of the vibe. Like the person who's like slightly cooler than the kid who's watching, but not not a dick. Just sort of like kind of a smart aleck. Like once Steve came in, he really helped us find a, a good through line for how Tom should behave. And from that point on, we've just stuck true to that. We know in our heads what Tom would and wouldn't do, but we haven't articulated it much. When we added Sarah, that allowed him to have
has sort of a softer side, which I think is one of the reasons that he survived so long because now we have a different generation watching. They're not as into smart ass jerk heroes. So <laughs> it allows Tom to have that like softer side. <laughs> So the total immersion event, uh, the first one, The Intruder, was really just a fulfillment, we thought, on all the promises that we had made to our fans and to this audience, like, going up in it. We, we had a spaceship, like, we had our set. So that was really how those started. We felt like, ah, there's a way to tell a longer story. We can explore our world a little bit more. People can find out more about our host character, who really kind of was confined to a chair, and still is, <laughs> predominantly. Every weekday at 5, Cartoon Network's building you a better cartoon show. We call it Toonami. Toonami, when it started, is a lot like it is now, actually. It started with just a group of people, a small group of people, who wanted to make a show that they would potentially want to watch. The greatest thing about Toonami is we were able to, beyond, like, making a promo that told you the show is on at five o'clock we were able to do other freeform stuff that was really just our art you know we we kind of wanted to make stuff like that so we just made different things i mean i think the sort of tsunami mission statement for lack of a better word is sort of the same it's always been kind of driven by what we liked and wanted to do and that was sort of the beauty of it there was never a lot of money in it but if you can convince sean in the beginning to do it and now jason you can pretty much do whatever you want to do so that became video game reviews shooting live action pieces with comic book artists that we wanted to meet go riding in the goodyear blimp because we thought it would be a cool thing to do and there's still very much that tsunami vibe that just we kind of come at things with a with a very insider knowledge you know we really appreciate and really like what we work on and so i think they all have this very genuine feel back then we worked on much smaller things we had a lot less footage to work with because we had a lot less storage to hold all that footage on a real meta level i mean we were still working with tapes and it was way more old school than than now where everything's delivered digitally we have tons of media and since then it's gone through a lot of different kind of iterations kind of ran off the rails a little bit and got a little crazy but now i feel like it's back to kind of how it originally was with a small group of people just making a show that they would want to watch all right tom we're ready i love this job tsunami came to an end just because honestly all things come to an end when you make like tv stuff or you, you make stuff for companies like this they don't come in and they're like uh guys we're canceled today <laughs> Corporations are a bit more uh, nefarious about that kind of stuff. You know, I think it was actually more sad for people that were watching TV because if you, when you were working here, we knew the writing was on the wall. Like when you were working on a TV show and you get the cancellation notice, it's never a surprise. That's why we had a goodbye message ready to go and we just wanted to have the fans have like a goodbye, you know, because other than that, it was literally Cartoon Network just going home and plug. So, until we meet again, stay gold. Last time soon, Tom Four. Bang. Four years later. Some twelve. Oh hi, Adult Swim. I got the results of the test back. Definitely have April Fools. When Tsunami first came back on, obviously it was April Fools, and they didn't make an immediate decision on when it would come back, for, or if it was going to come back full time. So that took about, I feel like it was a week or two, um, and every day was sort of more likely, but it was still kind of figuring out what it was. By the end of whatever that period was, it was, okay, when can you get it on, and how much money do you need? So that was just a really quick turnaround to get it up, and then we had about six weeks after that to create a full night of packaging. So then that was a really big turnaround to make that. It was talking to as many people we could that had worked on it before to see what existed like what could we resurrect to make a night so we picked memorial day which turns out to be a terrible time to try and launch a franchise because you're trying to get everything in at the last minute and everyone you're working with is trying to leave so if we did it again i would say maybe the weekend after memorial day would have been a better pick but live and learn tom 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 so the journey to becoming Sarah uh, was in 2013. Um, I got a message that just said, hey, can you record this voice? 
and I didn't know, I didn't really know what it was for, and sent it back, and then I got notes back, which normally, when you're doing scratch, you don't get notes back, because that means the temp voice, and it's weird, and somebody's like, nah, do it like this, so then I recorded it again, and then they were like, oh, by the way, you're airing Saturday night, and I was like, oh, okay, so, uh, yeah, I found out just a couple days before, uh, Sarah went live, that I would be Sarah. So, how the new system's feeling? I'm still working out the kinks. Definitely's been on a journey, and similar to the way that Tom has. Uh, the first Sarah and second Sarah, they were a little bit more down to business. In uh, Sarah 3, 3.5, and 4, it's been a little bit more playful. As far as like her dynamic with Tom, she's definitely the one who's more down to business and will get serious when it's time to get serious. But I think that the back and forth between her and Tom, it's like a brother-sister relationship, I'd say. There's definitely an intruder in the station. Uh, thanks for the update, Sarah. My favorite part, I think, is when I get to do something from, like, the ground up. Like, the intruder is, is all, like, it comes to me and it's a total blank canvas. There's no sound at all. So you have to design every little element. There's definitely an intruder in the station. Uh, thanks for the update, Sarah. It's an interesting thing, Toonami. It has a very loyal following. And it's a very unique group of people that like anime, and we're an outlet to that group of people. And that's a pretty special thing to witness. The thing I've always enjoyed about Tsunami is that because we designed it, Sean very smartly designed it to be a catch-all for everything that he thought was cool, that we as a group thought was cool. It has allowed us to be a whole bunch of different things, even though it's technically just an excuse to show cartoons and get advertiser money. It's allowed us to interview really interesting people, musicians, astronauts, scientists. It's allowed us to write speeches to, when we're in the mood to talk about a subject and inspire kids and adults. It's allowed us to work in the world of CG and tell cool science fiction adventures because I'm a science fiction nerd. It's allowed us to put out albums. It's allowed us to make shows. And then the second equally important thing is everyone has been working at Toonami for a long time. We, have, we, of course, have newer people on board, but everyone that has worked on Toonami has done so because they were passionate people who cared about doing good work. And I always, I think that we have the greatest team and have forever. You couldn't ask for a better setup than that. You're setting yourself up to succeed when you're working with people who are pushing each other to be great. What can be more beautiful than doing work that puts your soul at risk? Because that's what it means to be alive. Hi, that feels great to be part of the 20th. I mean, I cut promos for the first anniversary, so cutting stuff for the 20th. Yeah, sure, why not? So the 20th anniversary is pretty, I mean, one, it illustrates how old we all are and then the beyond that it's just sort of crazy that a programming block of an afternoon kids show would have such an important impact on people's lives that they care about it 20 years later enough that we can still be on the air it's neat that um i'm kind of the newbie i feel like i'm still the newbie because i wasn't part of the original run and uh to be part of it and and help it keep going is, is pretty great. It's amazing to think that I've been around for 16, well, 16 years of it or so, off and on. We've been watching some of the old interstitials as we've been working for stuff, and it just amazes me how far it's come and how much we've done. I feel like we just keep redefining and, and, and growing. Well, I'm just excited that it still exists and is ongoing. I don't know, I'm excited about all the way the Samurai Jack stuff. That's been pretty fun. That's going to be cool. And every time we do a redesign, that's always super fun. It feels pretty darn cool to be part of the 20th anniversary like 20 years um, i'm psyched that it's back i think it it deserves a place um in the culture i think it ushered in the most impactful wave of anime into the united states and I, I mean i think it started a movement is maybe overstated but i think it started you know like it started something believe in yourself and create your own destiny I think in general, Toonami's future is it's continuing to do these intruder events. They're pretty special. I mean, to be able to produce a 11 to 12 minute 3D animated episode every year is pretty great, considering we're just an on-air promo team. Everybody always asks, what is the next show going to be? And even though we've answered that question 
hundreds of times we can't tell you that question still comes up so i'm sure what people would want to know is all the shows that are coming up and we've got some pretty great stuff on the horizon which i'm not going to talk about i think this total immersion event that we're working on now whenever it ends up airing is going to be pretty great i think technologically we're at a point where the animation has looked better than it ever has before i think uh the last intruder was when the spaceship's ripping out of the earth and everything's falling down and it flies away that's a pretty amazing shot uh so i think it's gonna look beautiful and i think that the story is gonna be something that people are not expecting which is always fun to subvert people's expectations i hope that they go to an ice cream store like that's not really a plot point that's been introduced um but i think that tom and sarah eating uh, a dessert of some sort (laughs) like i don't know how that would work with tom's programming or the fact that sarah can't leave the ship but just like a like an ice cream drive through it's a little (laughs) weird to say I've been doing something for 20 years, especially when I talk to someone who has no idea what Tsunami is, which there's plenty of people out there, and they're like, you've been doing it for 20 years? I'm like, yeah, and I did it for 20 years, and you still haven't heard of it. But if I can keep having fun and keep working with the same amazing people and having great experiences, I think I'm damn lucky. I think I'm damn lucky to have done it for 20 years. Always take pride in the lives that we're giving you. You've got two good legs, so use them. The last thing I would say is the main reason Tsunami's been around for 20 years, besides the people who make it, are the people who watch it and the people who talk about it and the people who cared about it. We don't get to express our gratitude often enough for that degree of loyalty, but we all feel it all the time, which is why we work so hard. I mean, I've worked a bunch of different kind of editing jobs, but none have been this sort of level of fan interaction and viewer interaction, like immediate interaction. I'd like to say thanks to our fans. It's not the reason why I do it, but it's really nice to know that it touches people and and that people enjoy what we make because we really do kind of think of that when we're making stuff. So, thanks everyone. You ready? I'm ready. Say the words, Tom. Oh, yeah. I still love this job. Happy 20th anniversary, Tsunami. Many more in the future. Tsunami and Adult Swim. Later.